So what's in this particular shovel so, full? So in this cluster we've got again uh, oats and buckwheat <coughs> and faba beans. <coughs> faba beans is an interesting crop. It's a uh, it's a cool season legume and it has a tremendous capability for generating nitrogen. So I'm shaking off the dirt off the roots here. You can see the you can see the nodules. Yes. There's actually clusters of of nodules around the root here in this in this faba bean plant. The interesting thing about the faba bean plant is it's a cool season legume and it has the capability of generating more nitrogen at 10 degrees Celsius than it does at 20 degrees Celsius. So it's very 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 well adapted to cool seasons like we have here. We plant it in fall we often plant it in fall for a winter cover crop together with oats. And um, the other interesting thing is, besides it generating more nitrogen at cool temperatures than at warm temperatures, it takes about minus 10 degrees Celsius to actually kill this plant. So here under our conditions, it's often freezing at night, but still above freezing during the day. So the plant keeps going, uh, producing all its benefits to the soil until we actually get a good killing frost at minus 10 degrees C and at that point it, it'll it'll die. So how would the health of, of the crops in this field compare to those of the surrounding fields of neighbours? Typically most of the crops growing in this area uh, succumb to diseases both at seedling time and later on in the growing season. As a general rule uh, most of the most of the crops in this area are sprayed with fungicide at least once uh, during the growing season. Uh, fungal issues are fungal diseases and some bacterial issues seem to be a growing uh, a growing challenge for conventional growers. And when you think of this from a microbiological perspective, it again makes sense because conventional farming seems to cause a major depletion in 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 fungal microbiology. So one of the things we're trying to do with this broad diversity is stimulate both bacteria, beneficial bacteria and beneficial soil fungi. And I think we're being reasonably successful in that process. As, as I showed earlier, whenever you can dig out a, whenever you can dig out a, a, a plant and you know, you see, you see this level of this level of, of uh, rhizosheath development, you can be quite confident that you're making significant head, headway with mineral availability, you know, disease suppression, and also sequestering carbon. That's the other interesting thing about this process. As, you, as, these, as these microbes reproduce, and as they look after their own nutritional needs, they also make available they also make available nutrients for the for the plant to grow and they never store those nutrients in a water soluble form they store those nutrients in an association with carbon <coughs> so the carbon is being sequestered as the nutrients are being made availability and the interesting thing about the carbon is the carbon is what gives the soil structure it 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 improves its aeration but most of all it improves the ability of the soil to hold water Right. And so in future in future crops would you be using more compost extracts do you think or vermicompost extracts moving toward the idea of the concept of auto inducers on seed that sort of thing yeah we want what we hope to do here is now that we've started this process we want to enhance it as much as possible we want to use the auto inducers that Christine Jones has been teaching us about we want to use we want to use compost extracts to to uh, to obtain those uh, auto inducers and apply them to seed. We're also open to the idea of, of using uh, protein digestates to, uh, to apply as foliars. Any way of stimulating these natural processes to enhance crop yield and avoid the synthetics, which typically tend to deplete all these processes. Thank you.